Hello, this is Short Me Tina from shortmetina.com doing a video recap of Penn National Gaming, ticker symbol P-E-N-N. -N. So as usual, what you're looking at is a daily chart. And I've been meaning to do this video for a while, but you know, for the past week or two, I've been caught up with some like freelancing gigs um, and some, some other things. Also too, I said to myself, well, maybe I should just put this message in a blog. Um, and so I'm here. I was like, you know what? It's a little late. Let me get this message out because it's an important one. Um, sort of a really super important one, in my opinion, uh, in terms of your future success as an, a trader or an investor or an, or a participant in the stock market, right? So let's just kind of like go over the basics. So what's the basics? The first time this stock came on my radar uh, was earlier this year, right? We're in November, the year is almost over. I noticed I noticed this um, particular stock, I wanna say back in February, March, I believe, right? Earlier in the year. Now, um, in typical fashion, like when I notice a, a stock, I don't just jump in the next day, right? Uh, similar to, you know, humans or the characteristics of people, in my opinion, right? And obviously it's one that I think has uh, validity to the argument. Stocks also sort of have personality, right? And so I don't just jump in a stock the minute I see it. I kind of want to monitor that stock, look at trading activity so I can um, more or less understand the behavior of the stock, which in essence is kind of understanding the collective sort of behaviors of people that trade the stock, right? Boom, that's a, a bunch of intellectual babble that's just nonsense. But anyway, so my point is I don't just jump into a stock. So I've been, you know, following the stock since February, March, right? And it it didn't it it didn't go out as a trade idea to my premium members until sometime in April when the stock was trading around 17, 18, all right? So let me draw a line. Visuals are always, visuals are good, all right? So again, no secret here, it's a particular pattern that I love to trade, right? Consolidation, range bound, uh, stock is trading um, between two more or less distinct points, right? And this, And in this particular example, that point or those points are around 17, 18 to 20. So obviously, if you're trading a stock that's trading within a range, you typically wanna buy, right, at that support level or the lower level of that range. And in this particular case, that was 17 or 18, right? So there are a lot of people who get excited and that can work, you know, for you, can work against you. There are folks that got excited that may not have wanted to wait until the stock traded at 17, which is the lower end of the range, right? They wanted to get get in somewhere at that midpoint, which is around 18. So boom, folks got into the trade at 18, right? Stock went as high as 1913. Okay, you made some money, right? That's like what, maybe a uh, seven, eight, nine percent gain. You made some money. Look what happens here, right? Stock after making some money, if you didn't take if you didn't take that uh those gains off the table, right? You wake up the next day, you're now sitting on a loss. Now what do you do, right? Two things. Some people, right, and the folks in my opinion, who who can how shall I say this? Actually before I go there, I guess in for me lesson one don't be a chaser, right? Chasers at some point or another, they always get burned, right? So if you chased, yeah, you made money initially with that pop, but then if you sold, right? Or if you panic sell, which a lot of people tend to do, you know, you would have gotten burned when the stock uh, dropped to 17.55. On the contrary, for those individuals who are not chasers, right? And they decide to wait until a stock gets into an ideal price point, right? They're actually in good shape here because they, they got in, right, somewhere in the 17, and the stock since 
since hitting uh, 1756 has not looked back since. So the folks who manage to at least hold hold on and wait for that ideal entry, the stock has not traded um, below that point. But that's that's kind of just half the battle in my opinion, right? The other battle is, and again, I think if you can if you can somehow recognize this early on, and I know it's hard, even as like an educator, um, I can only tell you about it. I, I, like, I don't, like, I don't have the ability to make anyone hold on to a stock, right? You know, so if you're in a good trade, and I've blogged about this like endlessly since I started Short Me Tina, you know, uh, 1.5 almost two years ago, I've blogged about it endlessly. Like the money in the markets is made by seeing. And that, in my opinion, I guess is sort of like the, the general point of this video. One, to talk about this really awesome trade idea, right? That I alerted to um, both premium and believe it or not, both premium and free members. Um, I spoke to about uh, the stock. Anyone that goes on shortmetina.com or anyone that subscribed to my free mailing list, at some point, this was mentioned to you. So with a buy point of 1718, the stock is trading at 27. And I guarantee, well, I can't say guarantee because you those are words that you should not use in the market. But I want to say more than likely, this stock will double. Like you're looking at a pick that would have given anyone who's managed to do what I think is necessary to make money in the markets, and that is to just sit on good trades. Now, that's not easy to do, right? For, for, for those folks that bought at 18, so they wake up, stock is trading at 1756, on paper they've lost money. At that point, most people can't handle a loss, right? They, they, they can't handle it. They, you know, they throw away the trade and that's it, they're out. For the folks who were able to get in at 1756, right? They've only, in my opinion, they've only, um, they've accomplished half or a portion of what they needed to do. And that is to get into a trade at a good entry point. Now the next, the, the next phase, right? Which again is really the hard part about trading is like the just the sitting on that good trade, like holding on to that good trade, not necessarily getting greedy. I, I, you know, yeah, how's that expression go? Um, uh, bears make money, bulls make money, pigs get slaughtered, whatever that is. I don't know what a, I guess a pig is someone that's greedy. It's not necessarily being greedy. It's holding on to a trade for as long as you can until the thesis is no longer valid. So for the folks who are able to do that, they're about to gain 100% or they're about to get 100% return on their money, right, in less than a year. All because they did nothing but enter a trade at a good buy point, right? Well, in retrospect, it is a good buy point. Um, but even if the trade didn't, even if the trade did not materialize, right? And say, for example, we weren't sitting at 27 and we broke 1750. Getting in at 1750 would still have been a good entry point, right? So that's what you need to do to be, um, in my opinion, to make monies in the market, uh, along with a lot, along with some other things. But I think it boils down to getting into trades. Um, at good entry points and holding on to those trades. I know you have day traders out there. I know you have scalpers out there. And honestly, I, I, and I guess different strokes for different people, I just can't jive with that. Like there's no, there's absolutely no reason in, in my, and I, no one can love the stock market. No one can love trading as much as I do. No one. And for me, it makes absolutely no sense right? Absolutely no sense to trade 20 stocks every single day. Like, what is that? To me, that is like madness. That's like, um, that's someone that's like on crack or like, you know, with all due respect, I mean, obviously 
put this in the context. I'm not trying to offend anyone, but that's someone that's just so hyper in and out, in and out, in and out, scalping for like a penny there, scalping for like two cents there, scalping for like a dollar there. Like that doesn't make any sense. Why do all of that? Why exert all that time and effort when all you have to do, one, is get into good trades like PENN at good, um, at good entry points and holding on until the thesis remain uh, until the thesis um, or the reason you got into that trade is no longer valid. So again, we may hit 34, which will be a hundred percent return from the initial entry zone. And who knows this stock can actually put up 125% in the future, 150%, 200%. You do not know. And right now, this stock is not giving you any reason to say it's time to exit based on the chart, right? This is all technical stuff because obviously um, any kind of fundamental hiccup in the company can throw this all out of whack. But right now, in terms of this chart, it's not telling you or it's not giving you any reason to sell. It's doing what it needs to do. It's appreciating, right? It's, appreci it's almost appreciated to the tune of 100%. Why sell? Yes, you can shave off some, right? But why sell? So the folks who, who did the right thing, they got in at 17. But let's say, for example, when it got to 22, they sold, right? Or when it dipped back here to around 20, they sold. Yeah, they still money. Yeah, they still made money, but they didn't make as much money as they they could have if they just held on, right? Um, so I, I guess that's kind of it. Like, if you want to be a good, successful trader, like, all you have to do, again, and I'm not saying that it's easy. Obviously, it's it, it there is something about it that's not easy, because if it was, everyone would be doing it, and statistically, we know that everyone isn't doing it. Um, and if it's hard, and, and you know what? If you can't deal with the daily fluctuations of um, any stock that you're in, like, if it kind of pains you, or like it gives you anxieties or what have you to see your stock, you know, go down and then go up and then go down and then go up. My advice to you is stop watching the stock, right? It doesn't mean you need to dis disconnect yourself from the market. There are other stocks and other trades, you know, you can be looking at. But if you find that you cannot hold on to a winning trade and you kick yourself, you know, for example, and this is not the best example, but if you kick yourself for being someone, for example, who bought, you know, Netflix at 50 and then sold it at, you know, 75, not realizing in a few years, Netflix will be sitting at 200. Or if you're that person that bought Facebook at like 40 and sold it at 80, Facebook is sitting at the upper 100s, right? And all you had to do was absolutely nothing. Just sit there, just hold on to that trade. And if that's hard for you to do, then maybe you just need to disconnect yourself, again, not from the market in general, but from that particular trade that you're in and use that energy and that time to look for other trades, right? Because I think a part of the reason that some of us cannot hold on to these trades is because you know we're looking at that constant up and down fluctuation, all right? up to day down tomorrow up to day down i mean that but that is a, it, that is in essence the market right so try it you know i suggested it with um you know uh s some of my free subscribers some of my paid members i've suggested it with you know just kind of anyone who i think um have issues holding on to trades so i'm kind of rambling now so the, this and this video, again, to reiterate, and then I'm going, in part is to, one, talk about this particular trade, right? Penn National Gaming, ticker symbol P-E-N-N. -N. Uh, we got into this trade around um, 17.50, and I would bet less than 10 to 15% of my members remain in this trade, right? But for the ones that are still in this trade, obviously, let me know. And for the ones that are in this trade, like, they're sitting on they're sitting on some sizable gains, right? And that's kind of like not even the uh, you know what I, I could show you other um, examples of trade ideas that I've um, 
that I've uh, come across and mentioned to paying members at the beginning of the year that's putting up 60, 70, 80% from initial buy point. But a lot of folks have not realized those gains because they panic and they, you know, they panic and they sell out at the first sign of profits. The first sign of profits only tells you in that moment, you are right on that trade, right? You got in at the right time, things are going good. It does not necessarily mean, you know, take the profits off the table and run. You're, 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 you're going to go nowhere, not even nowhere fast. You're, it's going to take you five, 10 plus years to go nowhere in the stock market if you continue to trade like that. I guarantee it. 100% I guarantee it. No one is making millions of dollars off of scalping pennies here and there. No one's making, and I don't care what, they, no one's making, you know, monies from making a dollar uh, or a hundred to two hundred dollars off of day trades. They're not making money. They're not. I will call their bluff. I'm calling them out. All of them. You're not making money scalping. You're not making money trading pennies. You're not making money, um, you know, taking a dollar here off the table. The money is made by sitting, point blank. And the sitting is hard. Even as someone who's been in the markets for over a decade, the sitting is hard, but it's a necessary evil, right? If it's evil, right? It's, it's just necessary. Take that free time that you're constantly in the market looking at your chart, checking stock quotes every second, checking stock quotes every, you know, every single day. Just stop it. It's making you lose money. Just stop it. Find a, find something else to fill up that time. What's that something else? There are thousands of stocks out there. So once you get into one that's showing you a profit, which essentially says, you you know, you, you started off right, just leave it alone. Leave it alone, especially if it, it continues to do what it needs to do. Leave it alone. Stop looking at it. You know, use that time. Look at another stock that might potentially, you know, do the same thing. Use that time to find other good stocks, right? So that, like, really was, I want to say, the, the important message in this video is when you have a good trade, sit on it. I've been blogging about this since the beginning, like since I started Short Me Tina, but it does not sink in. People constantly want that like immediate gratification, right? They want it. They want it instantaneously. They want it now, right? And, and honestly, I while I say it, I shouldn't take credit for it, right? This has been written about in books, you know? Buffett said, you know, the market is a device from transferring wealth, uh, from the uh, impatient to the patient or something like like that. Jesse Livermore said the same thing. The money is made in sitting. Yet you have people out here constantly trading in and out the market, right? You have people out there promoting that that's the way to make money, constantly trading in and out the market. Try it. In fact, try both, right? Try trading in and out the market. See how far that gets you. It'll get you nowhere. I guarantee it. And then try the second option. And if you have tried either option, well, no, no, don't do that. Well, try it. <laughs> That's it. Try it. I'm, I'm going. I'm out. I'm gone. Short me Tina. Short me Tina .com. If you've made it through this 18 minute rant, you're <laughs> you're definitely someone that one is pretty patient. Um, and two, clearly, there's there's clearly a need. Um, to learn, quote unquote, what is the right thing to do to make monies in the market, right? So Penn National Gaming, we got into this trade around uh, 17. It's currently sitting at 27. And, you know, sign up at showmanteen.com. I will go through a series. I can't say frequently. I uh, Frequency. I will go through a, um, a series of trades that I have alerted members to in the past that are doing good or alerted members to the beginning of the year or even some at the middle of the year that's putting up 40-50% profits for those that are just sitting in the trade. You know what I do? Once I enter a trade, do you think I, I follow it or I watch it all the time? No, I have a cartoon that says that I watch the market, which I do, but I set alerts, right? I, 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 I know what the stock needs to do uh, to effectively tell me that I'm wrong on the trade. And then I have an alert for that. Send me some kind of a push notification when the stock reaches X, Y, and Z. So I'm not watching that stock every single day. I just more or less know when it's heading south, right? 
then I start paying attention. Equally, I know what a stock needs to do when it's going in my direction. So I'll probably say, you know what, send me an alert or push notification um, every 15% gain from this particular point. And then I get a push notification. And so I know the stock is doing what I need to do. I don't obsessively check, you know, I don't obsessively check the trades that I'm in every single day. I use the time one to record 20 minute videos like this. Think of other blogs. Scour, honestly, you know, I hang out at these, um, these kind of like forums or, you know, trading platforms just to kind of like gauge, you know, the sense of the trading community and particular newer traders and also seasoned traders that, that still can't seem to get it right. You know, those are the people that I, I want to say that I target, you know, those are the ones that I want the seasoned trader that's not doing well. And they've been at this time and time again, try something new and those newbies that, you know what, I, I don't want you, you know, starting off on the wrong foot. Cause if you start off on the wrong foot, it's hard to change habits, although it can be done. But anyway, Shwamitina, Shwamitina.com, sign up, check out Penn National Gaming, ticker some of PENN. I think the stock can do great things in the future. Um, thank you for listening. And as always, thank you for